This is the Chidi Q1 Pro, a rapid, fully enclosed 3D printer with an actively heated chamber. This printer can do PLA all the way out to CF nylon and beyond without any of the cloud connectivity concerns of other brands. But as always, it's not without its quirks. So buckle up for this in-depth review of the Q1 Pro here on Maker's Muse. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. And believe it or not, Chidi or Chidi Tech, as I have once known them, were one of the earliest 3D printing companies to reach out to me for a review way back in 2016 with the X1, a fully sheet metal MakerBot style 3D printer that felt bulletproof and well put together. It put the company in my good books and I've been reviewing their machines every few years for some time now. But man, have they released some weird stuff over the years. From spool holders that function like luggage handles to an underwater themed slicer aimed at children, Chidi often stray far from the norm, which I can respect, even if it's not always due to the best decisions. But that's all now changing with the rapid growth of fast enclosed 3D printers over the past two years, spearheaded by Bamboo Lab with the X1 Carbon, a company that this machine has clearly got in its sights. So let's go over its specs. The Q1 Pro has a print volume of 245 by 245 by 245 millimeters in the Z, a nice cubic volume that's just a little bit smaller than the X1 Carbon, but still more than big enough for most projects or batches of parts. It has a fully enclosed design made with these huge injection molded panels with a clear front door and a removable clear window on the top, which is important because if you want to do materials such as ABS or nylon, you need to keep the heat in. But this printer doesn't heat the chamber passively using just the print bed. Oh no, it has an actively heated chamber. The patent for this only expired a few years ago. So this is the first hobbyist 3D printer I've personally tested that has an actively heated chamber and it can hit 60 degrees Celsius to completely negate print part warping or layer delamination. It won't do crazy materials like PEEK, but I reckon even POM, P-O-M, would be possible in this thing if I could only get it to stick down to the print bed. More testing needed. If you want to print with PLA, uh, PETG, or TPU, however, you do need to open the printer up by removing the top window and opening the door. Yeah, what's going on Cheaty? Couldn't figure out how to put a handle in your over the top injection molded door, even though the top cover has handles. I don't know, sometimes I wonder if these companies even test their products at all before sending them to production. That untested vibe continues with the spool holder. I haven't personally reviewed the X Max 3, which is Cheaty's much larger enclosed 3D print offering, but I did help Joel unbox it on a live stream last year and we joked out how hard it would be to access the spools at the rear. So now the spool holder juts out to the side on this flimsy bracket. And I have already had spools fall off it mid print several times. Those usability quirks aside, this machine is actually really well built and the internal motion systems are all mounted on an internal metal chassis, which feels very solid despite the abundance of plastic on the outside of the printer. The X axis is supported with four linear rods and two independent motors, leading to a very stable and accurate print platform. This machine takes care of all the bed leveling and nozzle offset for you out of the box. All you need to do is unpack it and load in the world's smallest sample of PLA plastic to fire off a speed benchy that's stored on the internal storage. And yeah, it's pretty speedy. Chidi claim a maximum print speed of 600 millimeters a second with accelerations all the way up to 20 meters per second squared and flow rates of 35 cubic millimeters per second. But in reality, their flow rates are actually limited by the material they're printing. As you can see in the slicer, this actually will reduce your overall print speed by quite a lot depending on what filament you're printing with. And that tiny sample of PLA won't last you long either, with mine running out on the second test print. That's where more cheaty weirdness starts sneaking in. The printer has a filament runout detection, which works great, but the filament changing routine is a really odd process. The filament unload function asks you to remove the PTFE tube from the top of the extruder and cut the filament off, 
before feeding more material in. And considering that the PTFE has a machined notch in it to lock it in place, I had to like physically rip it out to remove it, which effectively ruined the locking capability of the PTFE in the process, and also knocked the cable chain loose. The idea of cutting filament and removing it isn't bad. Bamboo Lab printers do this with a physical cutting blade, but either there's IP protections on this in China, or Chidi really didn't quite understand the concept. Further, when you're feeding more material in, such as in the case of the filament running out, there's enough of a gap because of the filament run out sensor that the filament deviates and it can easily miss the extruder entrance, making it a little bit difficult and a little bit finessed to feed in more filament when you run out. Now let's talk a little bit more about what's under the hood. The machine has a Cortex A53 mainboard, which is a 64-bit processor and it's running Clipper, which means you can dive right in and modify the functionality of the firmware to your heart's content. For their slicer, Chidi recommends either Orca Slicer with their own profiles or Chidi Slicer, which appears to be a heavily modified version of Prusa Slicer with bits and pieces from Orca Slicer. And you can connect to the printer directly through the slicer using Moonraker and the Fluid UI. And they went as far to change out the Prusa mascot in the tooltips to their own random one and alter every little button and color scheme. But then they removed Prusa Slicer from the copyright section and just put themselves. Yeah, look, that doesn't fly guys, do it properly. Software heritage aside, it's actually a piece of cake to connect the printer to the local network and then send files wirelessly as you slice them. You can use a USB stick, but it was actually so easy, I haven't really bothered. I just use my computer to send wirelessly and the fact that the webcam is right there within the slicer thanks to the Fluid UI and you have all the Clifford commands on hand, I find it really handy and actually very similar to the user experience out of Bamboo Studio, just without the app or sending things over the cloud. You can access the printer's URL from any device on the same network though, so I'm sure some clever cookies out there would know a way of making this URL accessible from anywhere on the interweb if you really wanted to. Now let's talk about the actual printing experience on the Chidi Q1 Pro. In short, it's awesome. I did a ton of PLA prints to start with, and well, none of them failed. The magnetic PEI sheet is really handy for removing them after the print is complete. They simply break free once it's cooled, but I will say that putting the sheet back in place is pretty tricky to snap it in place perfectly. There's only one small guide at the back center of the print bed, and if you don't snap it down perfectly to the strong magnets, then it can ride up on these plastic sides of the print bed and not be perfectly level, which it's a pretty tedious thing to get right, but not too bad once you know what you're doing. The start routine before each print is also um, not optimized to say the least. Chidi has gone with an internal filament poop bucket and this felt wiper and weird bearing setup on a floppy arm to prime the nozzle and break the purge off before printing, but the print routine doesn't do a good job at all. The machine will heat up, spend ages purging and wiping and mashing the nozzle against the mechanism before moving to the front of the printer and then cooling down again in preparation for resonance compensation and bed leveling before just then heating up the nozzle again and then letting it ooze before doing another purge and wipe. Nope, it just drags the ooze into the print area and lays down a few lines before starting the print. It's very obviously broken and needs improvement, but I've not yet had time to search through all the custom commands being used to figure out how to fix it. The prints do still work, it's just not optimal. The fact that this machine has such an elaborate mechanism paired with a coupler on the external PTFE tube leads me to believe that Chidi might release some kind of filament management system in the future for the Q1 Pro, but they told me that's not on the cards, so we'll just see. We'll start with the Benchy that comes loaded on this machine. The total print time was 22 minutes, including all the faffery the printer does before starting. And yeah, it's a really clean Benchy. There's no stringing, there's no issues with the overhangs, even though it's printed so fast. The only thing I might say is there's a little bit of rippling evident from the speed of the printer, and maybe the resonance compensation could be dialed in a little bit better to remove that, but it's very minor, only visible when you catch the black PLA at just the right angle. Next up, I printed this Easter egg cache, which has quite steep overhangs for the threads and needs to print without any support material, and it is absolutely flawless. The start of the egg right at the bottom when the overhangs are incredibly severe looks a bit messy, but it actually recovers way faster than many other printers I've tested, which says that when you open the machine up with the curtain blower on the side, it actually cools PLA 
very, very effectively. On the internal storage of the printer, it also came with this coin slide castle thing, uh, which actually turned out incredibly well. There's only one defect as that slide met up with the top of the tower, where I think it might have, the extruder might have bumped it slightly. Because remember, this was printed without support material all the way up, but there's a very small defect indeed. In fact, it doesn't even seem to be that deviated off uh, where, it, where it started to resume and print it correctly. And I can't see any artifacts on this. And again, the cooling of the very steep overhangs is very impressive indeed. To benchmark clearances and overhang quality, I threw it at my clearance castle and my clearance gauge. The clearance gauge got all the way down to 0.15 millimeter clearances, although that one was a tiny bit stuck. I did need a screwdriver to just bump it slightly and it did come loose. I think when the extruder comes around to do seams, there's maybe a little bit of fine tuning that could be done there to make the seam a little bit smaller because I also found in the clearance castle that the actual tower itself that comes free was slightly stuck where the little pin is for the drawbridge. But again, it was very easy to just break free and the rest of the castle is phenomenal, including the drawbridge of the clearance castle, which has three bridging tests and a ridiculously steep overhang test at the top that usually looks terrible. And in this case, it actually looks acceptable considering that it's got such a steep overhang. This Techno Fox from Photos Mint, again, a very challenging print, was printed using organic supports with some very old Polyarchemy Elixir PLA, which was a little bit stringy because of how old it is. But actually, once that was just pulled away by hand, the print is very impressive. A little bit difficult in FDM to see how textured and detailed this model is. It's really, really more suited for resin 3D printing. But if you look closely, you can see all the detail was preserved and it actually has these crazy amounts of detail with no issues at all, no under extrusion, and the, the support material broke away so cleanly that I can't even really see where it was attached to the model. Next up, I wanted to print something that had lots of moving pieces that needed to be assembled, and I love this escalator model by Alex Y. It has many, many moving pieces, and it actually works really, really well. Each piece was printed flawlessly. Even the tiny stairs were done in one full batch on the print bed, not a single one detached. I knew I was playing with fire with that file because each little edge, like the little spoke, has a tiny contact area of the print bed, so any issues with bed adhesion would result in the whole print wiping out. But no, it printed fine. Everything assembled perfectly and the whole mechanism is so smooth. This is a really cool model. I'll, uh, I'll link it in the description below. And finally, I wanted to throw something huge at the printer. So I printed out this Mayan dice tower by Fate's End, Kim, who uh, did a Kickstarter ages ago that I backed. She designed heaps of different dice towers and continues to do so. And this dice tower is printed in this ridiculous tricolor shiny PLA that I just bought locally from Jaker. And it has such a gorgeous shine to it. And the print is Flawless, so gorgeous. And despite the filament being open for a while, again, there's very minimal stringing, maybe just a little bit wispy, but really a very impressive result. I absolutely love this tower and I'm gonna be using it many times in the future. A few other things of note, my PEI bed is ruined as I tried to do baby stepping on the first layer in an effort of sneaking it down a little bit closer. But I didn't realize that the baby step commands are only sent after a few lines of G code are printed on the printer. It's not instantaneous. So it went from no changes in height to smashing down onto the print bed at once. Once that hard nozzle dives into the powder coated PEI, there's no going back, it'll destroy it instantly. But surprisingly enough, hasn't seemed to affect my print adhesion too badly, so I'll just live with it. Good quality PLA printing is fine, but that's not really where this machine shines because I loaded up some cheap ABS and sent it using their rapid ABS profile. And man, can this machine print ABS like a beast. The fact that the chamber is kept actively heated at 55 degrees Celsius consistently for the entire print makes all the difference in preventing warping, and these prints among the best I've ever achieved. Take this spiral, not only did it print without warping on some ultra thin edges, but the layer bonding is phenomenal for an ABS print. It's actually very strong with only minor artifacts or some of the very steep overhangs. And now for the filament I'm most interested in, nylon. Carbon fiber nylon was no challenge on the Q1 Pro, however I did find that the chamber heater actually needed to be disabled for it to work, because the extruder assembly is within the heated chamber, so it also gets exposed to the high temperatures, and this was causing the filament to soften prematurely and jam in the assembly. In the case of just raw nylon PA12, it was actually creating this odd squiggle when it did, because it was obviously softening and then jamming. I disassembled the extruder to take a closer look at how it works, 
And although there's these fantastic dual feeder gears to grip the material, there's actually a substantial distance for the filament to travel down into the hot end, and the bore that it travels in is actually a little bit oversized, which doesn't constrain the material correctly, allowing softer materials to jam. Now, Chidi tells me they've fixed this issue with the extruder, but I can only review what I've been sent. And this means that with my machine, even when printing with 95A TPU, like high flow TPU, I have to reduce print speeds significantly to get it to work. And even then it's fairly hit and miss with my fair share of severe extruder jams that required me to disassemble the unit and clear the blockage. So although I did get carbon fiber nylon to work, I was really interested in getting just raw PA-12 to work because it's so tough and I wanna be able to use PA-12 in my combat robots. So after a while I did get it to function, but only with some prints. So this gearbox housing, the support material actually for the most part did pull away. Um, it's stuck in some areas because nylon does well to itself very well. I was actually amazed the supports pulled away at all. Uh, and it's a little bit stringy because it's been open for a while and I didn't dry it quite long enough, but it's so tough. It's ridiculously tough. So I love the fact that the Q1 Pro can print just raw PA-12 with no carbon in it because it is a lot tougher when it doesn't have the carbon fiber in it, but it does warp a lot more. So the spiral, I did attempt it in PA-12 and you can see like, even though I did get to stick to the print bed, it's pulling away from itself. Like it's warping as the print's forming and the spiral just couldn't form. It was quite soft, yet it would warp. So it made these weird segments out of the print, but it did still stick down to the print bed and not break away. So that, I'll call that a win. And I'm definitely looking forward to using crazy high-end materials for my future projects using the Q1 Pro. The actively heated print chamber removes so many environmental unknowns when it comes to printing with high temperature, challenging to print materials. And I'm really excited to see this technology become so accessible at such an affordable price. But yeah, what is that price? Well, Chidi is gonna sell the Q1 Pro for $599 US or a special early bird price of 469 bucks. That's pretty wild considering it's the same price bracket as the Bamboo Lab P1P, but it's fully enclosed with an actively heated chamber, has a real interface and none of the cloud connectivity concerns of that machine. It's a little bit smaller in print volume, yes, and a heck of a lot less polished with weird design and user interface decisions marring an otherwise very good printing experience. Chidi tells me that they're dropping a firmware update to fix a lot of the things myself and other reviewers have complained about, but once again, I can only review what I'm given, and I really hope that filament load and unload routine is fixed, because man is it terrible. Chidi Tech has had a few hits and misses over the many years I've worked with them, and this machine is definitely heading in the right direction. I think it offers a good value option to people who want to experiment with engineering materials like CF nylon without breaking the bank. And I look forward to seeing the Q1 Pro get polished into a really capable, not so little 3D printer for all kinds of cool projects and products from you guys all around the world. You can find purchase links for the Chidi Q1 Pro below. And keep in mind that the early bird pricing is strictly limited. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but they're telling me that these machines are already in warehouses all around the world. So you shouldn't have to wait too long for your printer if you decide to pull the trigger. And as with all reviews here on Makers Muse, this video has been completely my own opinion and they did send their machine free of charge. They haven't seen any of the, this review before you guys. They have no influence over what I say. And I genuinely hope this video has been useful. So if you wanna stay up to date with the latest 3D printing tech, upgrade your 3D printing skills with tutorials and guides, then maybe consider subscribing to Makers Muse. That's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. Catch you later guys, bye.